Hey kids, welcome to our look at what a good submission for the create task is. Hopefully by watching this video, you have a better understanding of what you need to submit to the AP College Board and what a good submission looks like. In my other videos, I mention that the person scoring your create task, the AP reader, only gets three documents. One is his video. Two is their written response. And the third is a PDF of their code. Let's take a look at the rubric first and see what we should be looking for. In this submission, we should see the program running some input, the program's functional, and an output. We do not award any points if the following is true. The video does not show or demonstrate the program running or it's just a bunch of pictures meant to be a movie. Let's go ahead and watch the video. Looking back at our rubric, did the video demonstrate an input? It did. You had two options, the length of the word or the letter. Did it demonstrate some functionality of the program? It did, the main point of the program. And it was also the output, which was all of the letters. The first part would be marked as completed. The second part of this row, that means to get credit, you need to do both. And what you need is a written response that describes the overall purpose of the program, describes what functionality of the program is demonstrated in the video, describes the input output of the program demonstrated in the video. You can see for your submission, those are these three questions right here. Before we look at the written response, I want to take a second and talk about language. It is very important in the create task. You should be using the vocabulary you have learned this year. Use proper names. If you're talking about a variable or where something's happening in your code, name that line. Always use the variable or list or function names. Even use the data types, string, integers, stuff like that. The more specific you are, the better. And kids, it does not hurt to bold the words. If they are specifically looking for inputs and outputs, bold the inputs and the outputs. Make it easy for the reader. For describe the overall purpose of the program, they wrote the purpose of the Word Game Helper app is to assist users in finding words to help in various games like Scrabble or crossword puzzles. Does that describe the purpose of the program? I think it does. Describe what functionality the video illustrates. The video shows how the user selects the length of the word and the first letter from different dropdowns. Does that describe a piece of functionality? Yes, I think it does. Describe the input and output of the program as shown in the video. The user inputs a value to the program using the dropdown menu. The output, which is a list of words that meet the chosen conditions, is displayed on the screen. Does that describe an input and output? I think it does. Would we give points for this row? We would. The response describes the purpose of the app to assist users in finding words to help in various games. Input and outputs are shown in the video and described in the response as drop downs and list of words displayed on the screen. That means for row one, well, I get one point. And kids, we're going to take row two and three together because remember, row two is copying and pasting parts of code. Row three is explaining what you just copy and pasted. The key to row two and three is creating a list 
and using that list. Let's look at the copy and paste first. The written response includes two program code segments, one that shows how data has been stored in this list or collection type, one that shows the data in the same list being used as part of fulfilling the program's purpose. Identifies the name of the variable representing the list being used in this response. Describes the data containing the list it's representing to the program. Consider only the following when scoring 3B. The written response must include two clearly distinguishable program code segments. But these segments may be disjointed code segments or two parts of a continuous code segment. If the written response includes more than two code segments, use the first two code segments to determine whether or not the point is earned. That means if you keep throwing stuff in, they're just going to use the first one. So that doesn't mean, kids, if you're not sure, just add another one. And if the first one doesn't work, they'll just use the other one. They're supposed to use the first one. Do not award a point if the use of the list is trivial and does not assist in fulfilling the program's purpose. It means if there's a list just added on that really doesn't do anything or make sense, you're probably not going to get credit. What does the template look like? For this one, we paste our two code segments in. And then we have our three questions, which is the next row. For the first one, the code segment shows how the data is being stored in your program. That means is a list being created. This code segment does show a list being created. This person created a list called word list that is looking through a data set called word. The second part of the program must show the data in the same list being processed, such as creating a new data from the existing data or accessing multiple elements of the list is part of fulfilling the program. What was the list we created? Well, it was a word list. It is being looked through right here. So it is a part of the function of the program. It is then being appended to filtered word list, which is up here. That means we have our list being created and how that list is being used. Let's look back at the rubric. Is the first code segment showing a list that stores data? Yes, it is. It is creating a list called word list. Is the second piece of code showing that data being used? Yes, it is. It is being used to create a filtered list. Would this get a point? Yes, it would. Let's take a look at the written response questions. Includes program code segment that shows a list being used to manage the complexity of program. Explains how the name selected list manages complexity in the program code by explaining why the program code could not be written or how it could be written differently without using the list. Note right here, responses that did not earn a point in row two may still earn a point in this row. It means if you didn't copy and paste or copy and paste it wrong, you can still explain what your code is doing and earn a point. Do not award a point if one or the more following is true. The code segment containing the list are not separately included in the written response section, not included at all, or the entire program is selected without identifying the code segments containing the list. The written response does not name the selected list or the collection type. In kids, this is very important for this row. You have to specifically name the list. Again, make sure you identify your list name in the written response. The explanation of how the list manages the complexity is implausible, inaccurate, or inconsistent with the program. The solution without the list is implausible, inaccurate, or inconsistent with the program. The use of the list does not result in a program that is easier to develop. Meaningful alternatives are presented are equally complex or potentially easier. The use of the list does not result in a program that is easier to maintain, meaning the future changes to the size of the list would cause significant modifications to the code. And those are just saying, don't just throw something in there because you need a list. Make sure it's part of your program. On our template, that is these three questions right here. 
Question one identifies the name of the list being processed in this response. On line one, a list called word list collects all of the words from the word list database and stores them as a list. Each word is stored as a string. Does this identify the list being processed by name? Yes, it does. Word list right there. The second question identifies what the data contained in the list is representing in your program. The word list is used in the program to show user suggested words of various lengths, starting with the given letter. For example, if the user selects a length of two in the letter B, the filter function is called in which the word list is traversed. Each element that is a length of two and start with B is added to a new filtered list. Well, that is what is outputted to the user. Does that identify the data? I think it does. Explain how the selected list manages complexity in your program by explaining why your program code could not be written or how it'd be written differently if you did not use the list. Our submitter wrote, the word list manages complexity because it allows any number of words to be stored in the list instead of using individual variables for each word, which would then be checked one by one to see if it met the requirements. The program would be extended from 32 lines long to thousands of lines to account for all of these extra variables. If the words are added or removed to the data set this list pulls from, nothing will need to change about the code. The list allows the program to work from any number of words since the filter function will traverse the entire list of words no matter its length. And again, kids, we talked about this in some of our other videos. The good thing about a list is it lets us look for specific things and it lets us add and subtract from it without adding extra lines. You can notice oh, this submitter had all of those. Would this receive a point? I absolutely think so. Would it receive a point for the row? This response explains that the code would be written differently without the list by storing each word individually in its own variable, which would require extra programming code. It also explains that the code allows the program to work for any length of word list without any changes. Well, this row would get a point. Much like row two and three, row four and five should really be taken together. This one, again, we're gonna copy and paste two segments together, and then we're gonna write about what we just copied and pasted. Let's look at the copy and paste part first. This includes two program code segments, one showing a student developed procedure with at least one parameter that has an effect on the functionality of the procedure, one showing where the student developed procedure is being called. Describe what the identified procedure does and how it contributes to the overall functionality of the program. Requirements for program code segments. The procedure must be student developed, but could be developed collaboratively with a partner. If multiple procedures are included, use the first procedure to determine whether the point is earned. Do not award points if one or more of the following is true. The code segment consisting of the procedure is not included in the written response section. The procedure is built in or existing procedure or language structure, such as an event handler or a main method, where the student only implements the body of the procedure rather than defining the name return type if applicable with parameters. The written response describes the procedure does independently without relating it to the overall function of the program. And if you see, what do you have to submit to AP? Here is all the questions. Looking at the submission here, capture and paste a two program code segments that you developed during the administration of this task to contain a student developed procedure, which implements an algorithm used in your program and a call to that procedure. The first program code segment must be a student developed procedure that defines the procedure's name and return type if necessary, contains and uses one or more parameters that have an effect on the functionality of the procedure and implements an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. If you see here, copy and paste it, we have a function called filter. It has two parameters, looks like len and letter. We have a for loop, which is our sequencing, we have an if, which is our selection, 
and it's looking through this list. So that is our iteration. If it finds one, it appends it, and we get something different. The second program code segment must show where the student develop procedure is being called in the program. And this is just where it's being called. Simply put, we have a function in a call. Do these two code segments meet the criteria from the rubric? I'll lay do. I get a point right here. Let's look down here at our written response. Includes a program code segment of a student developed algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. Explains in detailed steps how the identified algorithm works in enough detail that someone else could recreate it. And kids, that just means specific words. If you use a conditional statement, tell which conditional statement you used. If you're using a function, name the function. Just talk through your algorithm. Consider only written responses 3C when scoring this point. That means, kids, I can't look backwards at something you wrote up there and say, oh, this technically also fulfills this. Has to be written in this one, just like all of them. Requirements for program code segments, the algorithm being described can utilize existing language functionality or library calls, an algorithm that contains selection, iteration, and also contains sequencing, an algorithm containing sequencing, selection, and iteration that is not contained in a procedure can earn this point. Using the first code segment, as well as any included code for the procedure called within its first code segment to determine whether the point is earned. And if this code segment calls other student developed procedures, the procedures called from within this main procedure can be considered when evaluating whether the elements of sequencing, selection, and iteration are present, as long as the code for the called procedure is included. An algorithm containing sequencing, a selection, and iteration that is not contained in a procedure can earn this point. And that means, kids, there's some creative ways, but we're not going to talk about them here. Do not award a point if any one or more of the following is true. The response only describes what the selected algorithm does without explaining how it does it. The description of an algorithm does not match the included program code. The code segment consisting of the selected algorithm is not included in the written response. The algorithm is not explicitly identified. That means the entire program is selected as an algorithm without explicitly identifying the code segment containing the algorithm. That means don't copy and paste your entire code in. The use of either the selection or the iteration is trivial and does not affect the outcome of the program. That just means if you have an if is a return, the return would have been anyway, you didn't need the if statement. Here is the written response template. Our user for the first question, describe in general what the selected procedure does and how it contributes to the overall functionality of the program. The filter function is necessary in order for the program to output a filtered word list to users which meets their chosen criteria. Does that describe what the general procedure does? Yeah, I think it does. Explains in detailed steps how the algorithm implemented in the selected procedure accomplishes its task. Your explanation must be detailed enough for someone else to recreate it. Line 16 and 30 show and hide an image to let the user know the program is working. Once a list has been filtered, the image is hidden. To filter the list, a for loop is used, line 20, which traverses word list. The if statement on line 21 checks to see if the element at the index is the required length and starts with the required letter. If it does, the element is added to the filtered word list, line 22. After the traversal of the list is finished, if the filtered word list is empty, a string is added to let the user know that there are no options available, line 27. Finally, in line 31, the filtered list is displayed to the user with all elements joined together with a comma in between each one. This is a pretty good explanation of what the algorithm is doing. And notice the specifics, kids. They're using the word lines and what's happening. They're using the word list and loop, traverses, and the variable name. Everything you would need to know in order to recreate this. 
Again, the only thing I might do is I might bold anytime I had a variable or a line or one of those three important things, sequencing, selection, or iteration. Anytime you're talking about any of those three things, I would definitely bold it just to let the AP reader know. And the same thing with the word list. You're just tying everything together. I know it's going to seem like, oh my gosh, Mr. Rhodes, I'm bolding everything. But again, it's letting the reader know that you know what they're looking for. Would this get a point? Yeah, I think it would. The written response explains in detail, line by line, how the algorithm works, which filters a list according to the length and the first letter. This row definitely gets a point. We're on our last row here. Row six is a link to row four and five. Row six is testing the above copy and pasted function. Think of this question as having three separate parts. What are you testing? How is it being tested? And what is the result? The written response describe two calls to the selected procedure identified in response 3C. Each call must pass a different argument that causes a different segment of code in the algorithm to execute. Describe the conditions being tested by each call to the procedure. Identify the results of each call. Again, we can only consider what's written here in 3C, the previous two rows. Responses that do not earn the point in row four may still earn a point in this row though, but it's gonna be tricky, kids. Do not award a point if any one or more of the following is true, a procedure is not identified in written response 3C, or the procedure does not have a parameter. Kids, I wanna take a second here and just reiterate how important it is that you have a parameter with this function. If you have your for loop, if loop, and function without a parameter, you will not earn any points for this row. Make sure your above function has a parameter. The written response for 3D does not apply to the procedures of 3C. The two calls cause the same segment of code in the algorithm to execute, even if the results are different. The response describes the conditions being tested that are implausible, inaccurate, or inconsistent with the program. The identified result of either call are implausible, inaccurate, or inconsistent with the program. Here are the written template questions for row six. This is part one of our three-part question. What are we testing? Provide a written response that does all three of the following. Describe two calls to the selected procedure identified in response 3C. Each call must pass different arguments that cause a different segment of code in the algorithm to execute. First call, let's suppose the user selects from the drop down a length of three in the letter D. The second call, another example would be if the function was called with the arguments one and B. Notice two things are being passed off. Does that describe two calls? Yes, it does. This is part two of our three-part question. What are the conditions or how are we testing it? Describe the conditions being tested by each call to the procedure. Condition tested by the first call. The argument passed through the filter function would be the three and the D for the parameters len and letter. In the loop on line 21, there is an if statement which checks for the element in word list to see if it has a length of three and starts with the letter D. For example, when the element containing dog is examined, the conditions length of three, first letter D is met, and therefore the code segment inside of the if statement line 22 runs the dog, runs, and dog is added to the filtered list. The for loop continues running, checking other elements. Again, look at all of this great vocabulary. They're using if statements, the actual parameters, the word parameters, anything that you would need to know in order to understand this program. Does this describe what condition is being tested by each of the parameters? Yes, it is. For the second call, in this case, again, the loop on line 21 is used to traverse the word list. Each element is checked. When A is examined, the condition length of one, first letter B is not met. Therefore, 21 through 23 are skipped and the for loop continues on the next round. Pretty much describes above, 
Could this one be explained a little better? I think, kids. But again, you have to watch your word count. But you want to see just a little more on this one. This is our final part of our three-part question. What are the results? After the for loop finishes running, any words that have a length of three and started with the letter D have been added to the filtered list, which is displayed to the user. Result of the second call. Ultimately, no word is found with these conditions, and therefore the filtered list is blank until lines 26 through 28, where a string is added to let the user know no words were found meeting their conditions. Now, kids, here is where it gets a little tricky because this is where there's some nuance in the grading. Would an if statement in here count for a different segment of code implementing? It would. But if you want a little advice, I would treat this really as an if else statement. If something happens, otherwise something else happens. That means that no matter what, even if it's just selecting different parameters, there's always something different happening in your program. Would I give this a point? Probably, but I'm an easy grader. And kids, you never write for the easy grader. You always write for the hardest grader. This one did receive a point for this row. The written response clearly explains two different calls to the procedure. Two examples are given with different parameters, which result in different segments of code running. The results of each call are explained. Any word that had a length of three and started with the letter of D have been added to the filtered list. And no word is found with these conditions, and therefore the filtered list is blank until lines 26 to 28, where a string added to let the user know no words were found met the conditions. And again, kids, had we just added an else statement there, I think that would make this a much more compelling argument. I think this one would probably get points, but again, you'll just have a stronger argument with an if else statement. That's not to say an if statement will not get points, but you'll be much better off including that else. And kids, well, that's it. According to the AP College Board, this is a six out of six example, and we scored it six out of six. Hopefully, now you understand a little better how these are scored and what you need to write in order to get that same six. As always, kids, if you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video, kids. See you later. Bye, bye, bye.